Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank all of you for your testimony. I just make a couple points at the outset. When you have a, a huge, um, what economists call externality, uh, which is climate change, I, I know some of my colleagues don't really believe in that uh, as, a, as a threat, uh, but that is exactly where you want government action. And I also heard Senator Graham at the outset talk about how uh, China will potentially and is right now, you know, on, on a road if we don't do something about it to eat our lunch. I mean, the reality is countries around the world, consumers around the world are going to be purchasing electric vehicles. Um, and either we're at the top of our game uh, or we're going to be uh, left dramatically behind. So that's why I'm pleased that Maryland uh, is one of the states that has set very ambitious goals uh, in terms of EVs, um, target for 300,000 by 2025. And we're one of 15 states that have committed to ramp up the electrification of medium and heavy duty trucks so that all sales uh, of those vehicles are zero emission by 2050. Uh, there's been lots of um, evidence of the health benefits of this. Uh, the Rocky Mountain Institute estimates that uh, among the 15 states that along with Maryland are participating in this effort, um, they will see fewer premature deaths, 477 fewer premature deaths and over 6, thousand fewer asthma incident incidents per year and that's 3.5 billion a year and that's uh, on top of the climate benefits I think it's important to point out to my colleagues that while uh, heavy duty trucks medium tr and medium trucks rep account for only 10 percent of vehicles on the road they produce about a quarter uh, of the overall uh, greenhouse gas emissions so uh, one of the challenges that Volvo um, which is a company in Hagerstown Maryland uh, is facing, and, and they develop the, the powertrain manufacturing, uh, the powertrains, they have a facility there. One of the issues they have there is the, is the issue of charging infrastructure for medium and heavy duty trucks. So Ms. Gross, could you briefly describe some of the challenges uh, we're facing in this particular sector and, and what we should be doing about it? Uh, thank you, Senator, for that question. Um, let me focus on the solutions first, and then I'll go to maybe recap on some of the challenges. Uh, the, the most important thing that we can do in the sector for, for the for, um, heavy-duty, medium-duty sector is to get pilot programs out there. It is amazing what fleet operators learn by just um, purchasing and putting into their fleet the first one, two trucks, understanding what the relationship has to be with the utility, understanding what charging is, how it works, what it means to discuss rates and off-peak times and on-peak times, um, and what the economic opportunities are to actually um, work with the utility on those rates. So the fleet, this idea that we need to continue pilot programs is really alive. It's not the ones that have already started it, but every fleet in the, in the country should start to understand um, what it would mean to actually have that experience behind you. Once you have that experience, you make better decisions about right-sizing charging and right-sizing the grid requirements for it. Um, we need to prioritize feeders. Um, where are these truckloads uh, likely to show up? So we've got e the E-Road map uh, out there that describes and shows you visually where the, the loads are ex expected to come from. We've got Volvo data, Daimler truck data. We know we have the telemetry. We know where the diesel uh, vehicles travel throughout the country. So being able to prioritize where they are today and where they're likely to be when they're electric is super important for prioritizing these investments on the grid. And then finally, um, one interesting thing is we are kind of going about this piecemeal today. Um, this, is, this holds true for light duty vehicles as well, but on the medium and heavy duty trucking sector where these loads can be very concentrated at, on local distribution systems, we, um, we wait, you know, the utility industry um, can really only invest once a customer shows up and says, hey, I've got this load coming. Um, can you please, um, you know, upgrade the grid for me? I'm coming with this charging load. If we would step back and consider you know, in, in, in its totality, how much load is coming when more fleets, 20%, 40%, 80%, we could do a better job up front, more cost-effective job of putting these solutions in place. And so I would almost, uh, I would encourage um, everyone to focus on sort of those big nuances about the trucking sector that are important. And this whole timing mismatch, on, I know that that's on top of mind for Volvo as well, um, the timing mismatch between the time it takes to get grid power to a site versus the time it takes to, to order a few semi-trucks. And I, I said in my testimony earlier, uh, I can order a, a fleet of semi-electric trucks and they can be delivered in four to six months. 
and the, and the grid upgrades probably can't be made in the same four to six months. So we've got to get a hold. Right. We got to get ahead of this. Challenge. Well, so this, this is the issue. I mean, Volvo is actually losing orders right now um, from people that want to, you know, purchase these um, electric, uh, medium heavy duty trucks, but can't because of this uh, issue of charging stations. So I, I hope we will. Uh, on a relatively urgent basis move forward. I mean, this is the sort of chicken and the egg problem we've seen um, in other parts of this sector. Um, I may have some questions to submit for the record, but I see my, my time is out. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Van Hollen, uh, Senator Graham and I spoke earlier about trying to pull together some bipartisan technical recommendations for facilitating the uh, transition in a whole variety of ways, things like supporting peak shaving, and this would be another good example. So I uh, look forward to working with you on that. Thank you very much for your interest. Now we turn